Hello YouTube, Marielle here. The title of the video is Don't get mad, get even. And this is something I heard my wolf say to our son when he was, I believe he was eight years old. My son came home one day from school and he was upset. He was really upset. Something happened and he was really upset. And I was trying to comfort him. I was trying to get the full story out of him. And again, to be able to judge, you know, uh, you know, what happened and how I could advise him. It was a very unfair situation from what my son um, explained. So I was trying to give him different uh, uh, you know uh, different ways he could uh, respond respond next time something like that happened you know like go and see the teacher don't take you know don't you know don't do it yourself and whenever provoked don't just take the matter in your own hand those are the rules and you really have to be careful that, that kind of thing my wolf his father put his hand on his shoulder, turned him, and said to him, You don't get mad, you get even. And I remember and I remember my re my gut reaction. It wasn't a good one. I was surprised. I said nothing, but in, in my head, a whole bunch of, you know, arguments and counter arguments and, and pros and cons and why and the how just was happening in my head the whole time from the moment he it finished saying that sentence to helping my son uh, take his shoes off and walk inside, you know, open the door and walk inside the house and get life started. My head was just all over the place. Not in a ne negative way like, oh my God, no. I did not think anything automatically negative bad about what he said but this is what I thought at the time we're talking here a very young child one second the way I understood what he said don't get mad get even to me meant, this can only mean in my head, meant in my head, is that you have to hold a grudge for a very long time in order for you to get even. Number two. Number three. This meant as well for me is that you have to lay in wait for your opportunity to get even. That's what I thought. And it made, it made no sense to me. It made no sense to me. Why would anybody... <laughs> Who <laughs> want to do that? <laughs> I 
this is not war here. <laughs> this is, we're not living in a war time, in a war zone. This is not... Your sister hasn't been killed here. Your best friend hasn't been unfairly shot. Your neighbor wasn't murdered. Your mother hasn't been raped. You're, do you understand what I'm saying? In my head, this kind of uh, thought pattern will be appropriate with this kind of those kind of situation I could understand I can understand because the way I react to things and to people being unfair or mean to me the way I've always handled it is first making sure that I'm not mistaken second deciding or not whether that person meant what they meant and did what they did out of spite or not or it was just a simple mistake and then third making a decision on the situation about that person either give them another chance to make sure again <laughs> that I'm not mistaken about them so I say nothing I just let things happen or if I buy if I know for sure and I'm 100% sure because it has happened so many times that this person not good for me it's very simple for me there's no need to argue there's no need to go on and on and on and on and on and on I'm not in a business of trying to change people. I'm not in a business of trying to make you who you're not and convince you in any way, shape or form. You're fine as you are and I'm fine as I am. You're entitled to your opinion. I am entitled to my opinion. No, I don't want you to convince me just like you don't want me to convince you. It's just that that kind of behavior is definitely not what I, I, I want. And usually I, when I get to that point, it means that I totally feel that uh, uh, that behavior is, it has to be dangerous. You know, it's not your usual petty little thing that will make me go and, you know, push you out of my life. It's that... That is something that is absolutely, uh, could be potentially dangerous. It has to be something serious. And if it is serious and you are not capable of, you're not a child and you're not capable of figuring out that this is just no good, no, I don't want you around. And I'm not going to argue with you and no, I just don't want you around. You know, I wish you good luck and... Uh, you won't hear me say anything bad about you. You won't hear me say anything. No, I just... Thank you very much, but that's not for me. Because for me, it's all about energy. I don't want to spend that much energy on certain things like that, you know? So I'll just let the person go. So when my husband comes and say things like, you don't get mad, you get even, it conjures up all of those thoughts you know, the time it takes, the energy it takes, the, you know, you have to wait around. What does that mean, waiting around? Does that mean that you stay around that person knowing that they, they're very bad or 
um, why would you even want to spend that amount of time around somebody who obviously because in order for you to 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 feel that way it means that you really hurt and if you hurt well why don't you just address the problem so that it can be taken care of and you can pass that or if you don't want to address the problem but it's way too too much why don't you just leave so i had all of those questions inside my head and trying to make sense of it because really for somebody like me and the way i function it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever now again in a work situation i can understand that maybe because office office politics and all of those things you know they happen over there it's a completely different environment where you have to survive in order to hold on to either your position to your job to your salary and all of those things for the responsibilities you have in your life i understand that it's survival i understand that or at least i can imagine because i've never worked so i can imagine you know it's easy for me to to understand that but we're talking here a child and we're talking here a home situation i it made no sense until recently and until recently you are going to hear that quite a lot in my videos until recently because it's only since last just the february past that i figured out what i've been dealing with who i've been dealing with and having have having answers to i would say 22 years of my life the life that i have spent with them it's very much 24 years but it's 22 years of tiny little things here and there that just made no sense that i had sometimes i didn't even have questions most of the time i didn't even get questions it's just the case that they were just happening and i thought and i kept thinking oh, oh okay or huh? or you know but moving on and moving on and moving on and now i've got all of those answers and since getting those answers now i get it that is his motto this is how my passive aggressive covert abuser functions and to him this is war Every day, it is war. Everything I do and I have done it doesn't need to be bad. He takes it as an offense to him. I'm going to pay for it one way or the other he's going to get even with me the chaos that he has literally conjured up from dust gives him that steam that energy that he needs to have war He creates all of this so that he, he can be in a state of constant vigilance. So he can be in a state of constant retaliation. So that he he gets his supply so that he can get his narcissistic supply his family life is not a family life his family life is a war zone that's how we function that's how we see things and that's why 
a Nazi's technique. You don't get mad, you get even. You know, so many times I would feel like I was being punished, but if, but it was even, I could feel it, but my mind could not quite accept the term punished because it ma made no sense. But so many things, you know, um, would look like they were tit for tat or something I would have done, he would recreate the situation and, and do it, but it'll be so negative as if to make me look like, see, you did that to me, now I'm going to do that to you. Now, how does that feel? And even though it was nothing serious, but he would twist this and make it and and I would feel like I'm I feel like I'm being punished I'll feel like I'm being taught something but I just we're adults and we're supposed to be in love and we're supposed to communicate and we're supposed to hash out our problems and we're supposed to so it made no sense but I constantly felt like I was being punished and now I know. I was. He wasn't getting mad. He was getting even. And for no good reason. And that's the whole point, isn't it? It doesn't matter if there's a reason. Because even if there isn't a reason, he's going to make sure there is a reason. <laughs>